Hello and welcome to another review edition of Math is Still Math. Today we're going to be reviewing slope, intercept, slope intercept form, lots of good algebra work. So let's get right into it with section item one. Find the slope of a line. Really important skill. We're going to find out the rise over run, which is the change in x over the change in y. There's like five different ways to say it. Uh, essentially, we want to know at what rate is this line going up or going down. So in this case, uh, the first thing we want to do is identify two coordinates this line passes through. So it looks like If I had to say, coordinates it passes through that one's this one's really close. I almost want to pick that one, but I think I'm choosing those two. So. All right, so the change in y over the change in x. So how much does it go up? Well, it goes up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so it goes up 10, and it goes over 1, 2, 3, and it goes over 3. So the change in y will be 10 up, and the change in x will be 3 over. So... So that would be the slope. It goes up 10 and to the right 3. So there's our fraction. The slope is 10 thirds. On to number 2. So same way, we need to pick two coordinates that it perfectly passes through. That one looks pretty good. And Seem to see a pattern here. All of these look pretty decent. So we can either choose two of them that are close together, or we can choose two of them that are farther apart. Doesn't really matter. We'll do both. Watch, I'll prove it. So the change in y over the change in x, we'll do two of them. And they should come out the same. So we'll call these a, b, c, and d. All right, so let's do A to B. So from A to B, I go down one, one, two, and I go over three, right? So that's the change in Y is negative one and change in X is three. So that'd be one, negative one thirds because I go down one and right three. You always want to go left to right. Always go left to right. So that means your first move is either up or down but your second move is always moving to the right. Now, if I'm going from B to C, now keep, I mean from B to D, now this is the same line, so it should have the same slope. Right here, this downward move, that's, that's down two, that's down two units, down one, down two, and then across would be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six over, so that'd be two down, and six over, aha, and for those of you that are wary with your fractions, you can see that negative two six is the same as negative one third because they are equivalent fractions. So the better answer, the slope of our line is negative one third. It goes down one and over three, down one and over three, down one and over three forever. Let's get into the next problem, number three. Two coordinates. Looking super careful. Well, it looks like it crosses right here. Those look to be the spots. So it looks like it goes down to one, two, three, four, five, and over five. Down to one, two, three, four, five. Down to and over five. Yeah. So the change in y over the change in x, the rise over run, it goes down to and over five. 
So that's my slope because it goes down two over five, down two over five, down two over five. That's the slope. Okay, number four. I think I'll do this one, then I'll move on to a new section. So this one is going up, so I should have a positive slope. Um, looks like this is a good spot. Oh, hello. That seems to be the pattern. So it's going up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up over, up over, up over. So the change in Y for every single interval is up one, and then the change in X is over one. Oh, I'm off camera, sorry. So the slope is one, and we could prove this by doing, like let's say we want to go from here. If we call this A and this B, we would go up one, two, three, four, five, six. That'd be up six, and then over one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, so even if we did those two coordinates, going up six and over six is still a slope of one. Yeah, so that's how you find slope from a graph. Let's move on to the next section. Find the slope of a line through each point. Ah, so they're not giving us the graph anymore. So for this section, we're going to take the end point and subtract the beginning. Okay, we're just going to be subtracting here. That's all. So we'll call the beginning point number one and we'll call the end point number two. So this is coordinate two and this is coordinate one, just for organizational purposes, which means this is the X value of coordinate one and this is the Y value of coordinate one. And then the 17, this is the X value of coordinate two and this is the Y value of coordinate two. So remember our slope is the change in Y over the change in X. So let's take the ending Y value, which is Y two and subtract y1, and we'll do the ending x value minus the beginning x value. That's going to be the formula I'm going to use for the rest of these. So let's just do some replacing. So y2 was 7, and y1 was 1, x2 was 17, and x1 was 16. 7 minus 1 is 6. 17 minus 16 is 1. So the slope is 6. Because 6 divided by 1 is 6. Yeah, there it is. So the change in y or the change in x formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you just kind of, basically, you're taking the end point and subtracting the beginning point. That's it. Let's do this on number eight. So this will be x1, this will be y1, this is going to be x2, this is going to be y2. The change in y over the change in x would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the beginning minus, I mean, that's the end minus the beginning, which would be eight minus eight over seven minus two. So zero divided by five. Ooh, whenever zeros pop, pop up, we always hit the panic button and don't understand. Well, 0 divided by 5. How many times is 5 going to 0? It goes in 0 times. 0 times. So this one has a slope of 0. Okay, I'm going to go back to the last section. The last two they give you guys is really goofy. So on the last section... The change in Y over the change in X. This is a vertical line. 
the change in y is, it goes 10 up, right? But it goes 0 over. And this is going to make your calculator very mad at you. Okay, it's not going to be able to figure out. This is undefined. When you do 10 divided by 0, when you do any number divided by 0, it's going to have an error. It doesn't work. This has an undefined slope. That's literally the answer. What is the slope of this line? The slope of this line is that it is undefined. That is the slope. But a horizontal line does have a slope. So for number 6, So the change in y in this one is 0. It doesn't go up or down. But the change in x is it goes over by 10. Well, how many times is 10 going to 0? 0 times. So a horizontal line has a slope of 0. It's constant. It's another good word for it. But a vertical line doesn't have a slope. And the way I remember this is like if you've ever been skiing, like snow skiing, and you try to snow down, ski down a mountain that had this type of surface, you are no longer skiing. You are falling. So that is not a, that's not a slope that you can ski down. It's just, it isn't. It's a cliff. Okay, let's go back to uh, finding slope from two points. So for number nine, so this will be x1, this will be y1, this will be x2, and this will be y2. I'm just going to take the, the end and subtract the beginning. So that would be, so we want the change in y over the change in x. That would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's replace. So y2 is 17. And y1 is 7. x2 is negative 15. And x1, you still have to subtract, is negative 16. That, that's a really clever moment here for, um, for a lot of people that they get this right. You still have to subtract the x1 value. Now, x1 value is already negative, but that doesn't alleviate you from your responsibility. You have to subtract. Well, 17 minus 7 is 10. Six, 15 minus the negative 16. Okay, so what's the opposite of subtraction? It's addition. Negative 15 plus 16 is 1. So the slope... The slope that goes through these two points is 10 because it goes up 10 over 1, up 10 over 1, up 10 over 1. Last one for this section. Number 10. We'll call this x1 and this y1. This will be x2 and this will be y2. The change in y over the change in x. That's the end minus the beginning over the end minus the beginning. Okay, so y2, that'd be 6 minus y1, which is 15. And then x2, which is negative 11, minus negative 11. Interesting. Well, 6 minus 15 is negative 9. I'm getting off camera. I apologize. Negative 11 plus... Uh, the opposite of subtracting 11 is adding 11. So that would be 0. Oh, this is one of those special ones. Okay, so this is a vertical line because the, y, the x values didn't change. This is a vertical line. So this, the slope, is undefined. And that's the actual answer. You don't like it, but that is the answer. Let's move on to the next section. Aha! We're going to find some slope and some equations here. Find the slope and the y-intercept for each equation. Okay, so for these, I'm going to rearrange these equations into slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form 
is y equals mx plus b. Now, the m the m is the slope and the b is the y intercept. That's when x is equal to 0, your y value will be this number. It's where your line crosses the y axis. So for number 11, um, if I were to subtract 3 from both sides, this would turn into y equals x minus 3. So, one second, my laptop is about to die unless I plug it in. That's better. Okay, so the slope is right here because really that's 1x, but we're too lazy to write it most times. So the slope is 1, and the y-intercept would be at 0, negative 3. Let's work on the next one. You know, I'm just going to go down. I'm going to do 13 next. Be rebel. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I'll end up with negative y equals negative 3x plus 5. And then if I just multiply everything by a negative 1, because I need this y to be positive. So I'm going to distribute a negative 1 to everything. So that would be, I'm basically, I'm multiplying negative 1 on both sides to keep things balanced. So that would be y equals 3x minus 5. It just changed all the symbols. So we've got a positive y, a positive 3x, and a negative 5. Okay, so the slope would be 3 and the y-intercept would be at 0, negative 5. It's going to cross the y-axis at 0, negative 5. Okay. We're 15. I'm running out of room here. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I'll end up with negative 2y equals negative x minus 6, because these cancel each other out. And now I'm going to have to divide everything by a negative 2. So I'll end up with y equals. All right, so this was a negative 1x. So negative 1 divided by negative 2 is just going to be a positive 1 half x. And then negative 6 divided by a negative 2 would be a positive 3. Check that. Okay, so I have to divide everything by negative 2. So negative 2 divided by negative 2, they cancel. So I'm just left with y. Okay. This coefficient was a negative 1 divided by negative 2. So negative divided by negative is positive, And that's just going to be 1 half. Okay. Negative 6 divided by negative 2. Negative divided by negative is going to be a positive answer. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, so I'm good with that. So the slope is 1 half. That's up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. And the y-intercept is going to be at 0, 3. That's where it crosses the y-axis. On the right column, I'll do a couple of these. Like number 12. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And I'll end up with negative, I'm sorry, that's 2y equals negative 4x plus 10, because those cancel each other out. Oh, I'm off camera, sorry. So 2y equals negative 4x plus 10, and then I just have to divide everything by 2 to get this to go away. So I'll end up with y equals negative 4x. To, so negative 4 divided by 2 would be just negative 2x, and then 10 divided by 2 is 5. So my slope, which is right here, 
my slope is negative 2. That means this goes down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. And then my y-intercept, which is right here, is going to be at 0, 5. That's where it crosses the y-axis. Paper doesn't want to move. Okay. I'm going to let you do 14 and 16 on your own and see what you come up with. The answer is in the back. You can check it there. Let's look at the next section. Okay, so let's write an equation for each line in slope-intercept form. Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So the two things I need to find are the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, so the y-intercept is right here, which is at 0, negative 1. And then the slope goes up 1, up 2, up 3, up 4. It goes up 4 and over 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. And it goes over 3. Okay, so y equals slope, which is 4 thirds, x minus 1. There's the slope, and there's the y-intercept. Moving on down. Number 19. Y equals mx plus b. That's our format. Okay, so our y-intercept is at 1, 2, 3. Is it 0, 3? And the slope, it goes down 1 and over 2. So y equals negative 1 half because it went down 1 and right 2. And then I, I connected with the... Y, the y axis at 0, 3, so it would be plus 3. So y equals one, negative 1 half x plus 3. That's kind of sloppy. That x should be kind of next to it. y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. Yeah, that looks better. Same answer, but that one's kind of sloppy. All right, let's try 21. y equals mx plus b is the format. Okay, so we cross, oh, right there, okay. So we cross the 0, 0. And this is the up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, okay. So the change in y over the change in x, the slope, is it goes up 1 and over 1, so it's got a slope of 1. Okay, well that means that y would equal 1x plus 0. But I'm too lazy to write all that, so I would just say y equals x. Because 1x is the same as x, and why would I even bother writing a plus 0? So there it is, y equals x. There's your equation. I'm going to do one more because I'm so nice. You can work on the others, and you can check your answers. All right, so for 18. Ooh, you're going to have fun doing 20. Okay, so for 18, our y-intercept is at 0, 1. And the slope, if I'm going from this dot to this dot, I've got to go down 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's negative 4, and then over 1. Okay, so y equals mx plus b is the format. That's slope-intercept form. Our change in y over change in x is 4 down and 1 over, which is negative 4, and we cross at 0, 1. So that means our equation would be y equals negative 4x plus 1. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to let you guys try 20 and 22. And then, oh, 20 is, 20 is a goofy because it's a horizontal line, so good luck with that. But I'm going to move on to the next section. Sketch a graph of each line. Okay, well, 
I know I'm going to be starting at 0, 2. And then my slope as a fraction would be negative 2 over 1. So that's down 2 over 1. So down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. And then the uh, inverse would be to go back one up two, back one up two. So there it is. So just identify the y-intercept as a coordinate and then apply the slope. Let's look at 25. Okay. So this means I'm going to go through 0, 1. And this means I'm going to go up 1 and right 4. So 0, 1 is here. And then I go up 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and right 4. Didn't really connect the dots very well. Uh, down 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's your line. Looking at number 27. Okay, so this means I'm going to be at 0, negative 2. And this means I'm going to go down 1 and right 3. Because the slope is negative 1 third. So let's start off by going here. 0, negative 2. And then I go down 1 and right 3. 1, 2, 3. Down 1 and right 3. And then if I just go up one and left three, I can complete the pattern. And there's the line. Let's do one more. Okay, you guessed it. That means I'm gonna start at zero, negative four. And then that means I'm gonna go up three and right five. So zero, negative four is here. So up three and right five, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys do 26 and 28 on your own. Let's move on to the next section. Oh, we actually have a ton of these. Okay, well I'll do one on this page too. So this one means I'm going to be starting at 0, 2. And this means I'm going down 3, down 3 and right 4 because the slope is negative 3 fourths. Okay, so 0, 2 is here. And then I go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and right 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And inversely, I could have gone up 3 and left 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's your line. Slope intercept form is awesome. It's just, it's a machine that just, it, once you learn how to steer it, it really moves. So there's your, and then I go down 4. And right five. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Just drive it. Okay. There are some goofy ones in there, but I believe in you. Number 35. Write the slope intercept form of the equation. Oh, yeah, sure, okay. Well, y equals mx plus b is the format we want to use. So y equals negative 5 thirds x plus 1. They gave us the slope, they gave us the y-intercept. There it is. I'll go ahead and let you figure out number, the, 
the hard number 36. 37, write the slope intercept form of the equation that goes through these two lines. Okay, so here is the trick. They're going to give us these two points, and we actually have to discover the slope and the line intercept. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and get the slope. The change in y over the change in x is going to be our slope. We'll call this x1 and this y1 and this will be x2 and this will be y2. So that's y2 minus y1. That's the beginning minus the end over x2 minus x1. Let's replace. That'd be 4 minus 0 over negative 4 minus negative 5. 4 minus 0 is 4. Uh, the opposite of Subtraction is addition, so negative 4 plus 5 would be 1. Okay, so there's our slope. Slope of 4. Okay, now we're going to actually take one of these two points, this guy right here. Y equals MX plus B. And here's how we're going to figure out what B is. We're going to take our slope. And then this guy, and we could have used either one, but I'm just going to choose this guy right here. And we're going to plug in values for y, for m, and for x. Because we have a y, we have, a, we have an x, and we have an m. And then we should be able to figure out b. So the y value was 0. The m value was 4. The x value was negative 5 plus whatever b is. Okay. So 0 equals 4 times, that'd be negative 20 plus b. And then I can add 20 to both sides, get rid of that, and 20 equals b. So we already had m, now we have b. So y equals 4x plus 20. Sweet. Let's try another one. 39 looks good. Okay, first we're going to find the slope. The change in y over the change in x. That's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that'd be, let's label this as x1, y1, x2, y2. That's, so this is the end and that's the beginning. So that'd be negative 2 minus y1 is 3 over x2 is negative 5 minus and x1 is a negative 4. Use parentheses. Make sure you uh, nest your negative numbers correctly. Okay, so negative 2 minus 3 would be negative 5. The opposite of subtraction is addition, so negative 5 plus 4 would be negative 1. Negative divided by negative is a positive value, so negative 5 divided by negative 1 is just 5. So there's our slope. y equals mx plus b is our format. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab these guys here as my x and my y values. So 3 equals m times x, which is negative 4, plus whatever b is. So I just took the x value and the y value and plugged them in for the y and x here. And then I took the m that we discovered and put it in. So the only thing we don't know is what the uh, y-intercept is. So that means that 3 equals negative 20 plus b. So I will add 20 to both sides to get rid of that. And I'll end up with 23 equals b. And therefore, we got the slope. Now we have the y-intercept. So the answer would be y equals 5x plus 23. Sweet. Let's move on to another section. Oh, it's the answers. I guess I can go back and check my work. That is one of my greatest fears is that I'm going to do a YouTube video and I'm going to proclaim I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so number one is 10 thirds. Number three, negative two-fifths, check. 
Number two is negative one third. Check. Number four is one. Check. Number five is undefined. I told you. Number six is zero. Yep, got it. Number seven. Is he really filming himself, grading himself? Yes, he is. Number seven is six. Check. Number nine is ten. Check. Number eight is zero. Yes, it is. And number ten is undefined. Yes, it is. Oh, man. So good. All right, so I'm not going to check them all because I'm running out of time here, but let's check some of these. So number 11, slope is 1. Yeah. For some reason, it's not giving both, but yeah, that's the slope. So like 13, yeah, it's just giving the slope. That's right. Number 17, the equation. I think my printout's not working right because yeah, it's got the it's got the four thirds. It's just not including. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the answer document's a little faulty, but I'm sure that's right. Number nineteen. Yeah, the slope is negative one half. Yeah. Trust me, that's the right equation. Twenty one. Slope is just one. Yeah. It's awesome. I love confirmation that you're doing things right. Hopefully you guys actually watch these to their fruition. All right, let's check a couple more because the bell is going to ring. I don't know. What do you do with your planning period? I make videos. All right, 23. goes through 2, negative 2. Yep, it goes through that spot. It's like their version. So there's their version, and here's my version. Yep. So it goes through the same two spots, so I'm sure it's right. And 25, there's theirs, and here's mine. And 27, there's theirs. And there's mine. Rock on. Let's see. Last. Okay, let's go to the very back. Apparently, I don't have the very back, so that might be the end of my checking my own work. Okay, guys. Listen, slope, slope-intercept form, and the graphs. These are completely learnable objectives. We were trying to learn how to do translations, and this stuff, even though we went over it ages ago, just kind of blanked on you. Okay, well, ask me for help. I'm here to help, I promise. So email me if you come up with any questions. I'm going to give you your own hard copy of this document. I'm going to post it on Classroom. Just study and you'll do great. This will be the majority of your nine week exam. Remember, math is still math.